Okay. Um, so the uh, the architecture is simple. It's just uh, conceptually, it's exactly Ethernet. So physical MAC layers are implemented just point to point. Uh, nothing super complicated about that. The radio interface is quite complicated. So we will only begin to talk about it today, and we'll spend uh, most of the next class finishing it off. So as I mentioned last time, uh, it's usually at 2.4 gigahertz, the ISM band. Um, one thing, so we can distinguish between the physical layer and the MAC layer. So that's really, those are really the only two uh, layers that are implemented. Physical layer So we take um, the 100 or so, um, we take the 100 or so megahertz uh, available within the ISM band, probably about 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz, and these are divided into 11 channels. So if you've ever delved into the uh, ever delved into the, uh, the settings, the driver settings, if you've ever gone in Windows and tried to diddle around with your Wi-Fi uh, driver settings, you'll notice that you're allowed to you select the channel, gives you a, an option of 11. So these are spaced 5 megahertz apart. And Wi-Fi is um, the Wi-Fi signal the Wi-Fi signal bandwidth is twenty two megahertz wide. So that seems a little weird. Um, if the channels are spaced 5 megahertz apart and the Wi-Fi signal is 22 megahertz wide, then um, if you make an improper channel selection, if you have two adjacent Wi-Fi devices are uh, uh, basically, if, if you select adjacent channels for them, they'll overlap, they'll actually interfere with each other. Say the first channel to the last one, or? Yep. So, uh, the first channel, uh, by the way, this is different in different countries. So, in um, these examples that I'm going to give you are for North America. So the differences are because the ISM band is specified differently in different countries, just slightly differently. Um, uh, in North America, I think it's the smallest, and uh, in Europe and in Japan, it's slightly larger. But in North America, the first channel is centered at 2412 megahertz, second at 2417, Third at 2422, and so on and so on, up to the actually for our purposes, uh, one, two, three, whatever, up to six. Sixth is centered at 2437, <coughs> and the 11th, the 11th and last in North America, is centered at 2462. Eleven channels, all spaced five megahertz apart. And what you want to do, let's say you're Air York and you want to uh, deploy a huge number of access points over a huge area, what you want to do is you want to choose 
uh, that adjacent access points use uh, non-overlapping channels. So basically, there in, in this setup, there are three. 2400. So channel <coughs> one is at 2412, right here. And this is 22 megahertz wide. 2412, 2417, 2417, and so on and so on up to channel 6, so this is channel number 1. Channel number 6 is at 2437. So this is 2412. Uh, the upper limit here is where? 2423. 24, no, it's 23. Oh, sorry, now let me go. Okay, 2437, this is channel 6. That's 22 megahertz wide. Then this point over here is where? 2426. What would happen if I pick channel 5? Where would this be? It would be 2421, which is inside the first channel. So channel 6 is the first channel I can choose that doesn't overlap. So why don't we just pick channels that are out of each other's ranges? Why pick so many more channels? It gives you a, a little more flexibility. I'm actually not sure why they did that. They didn't just say, here's your three channels. But uh, this is the way they decided to do it. Um, channel 11 is at 2452. I guess you can make this into some sort of a pattern, like a cluster of a cellular thing. Since they go exactly. under slightly different patterns that don't quite overlap, if you spread them out enough, Maybe. like one six and eleven here, and then like two or like two seven something further up. You could argue that. Uh, However, uh, if you were going to, um, if you're actually going to deploy a system, you'd probably just pick one six and eleven and go with that, yeah. uh, because these are guaranteed not to interfere with each other. So anyway, uh, twenty four sixty two. Uh, for one thing, this top one down here is twenty four forty eight. This bottom one here is 24, 24, 52, 54, 56. Oh, I guess it's 51. 24, 51, yeah, that's right. 24, 51. So those also don't interfere with each other. And this is, in fact, the only set of three that doesn't interfere with each other. So this could explain. Um, I don't know if you've ever actually diddled with those driver settings, but um, I, I've done so and before knowing about this. And I think I switched it from channel 1 to channel 2 or something, and there's no difference. Well, this is why, because you're actually not really changing anything. So if your neighbor is using channel 1, you're also using channel 1. Change, change it to channel 2 is going to make no difference. You have to change it to channel 6 or something, something other. Okay. One final comment. This is, by the way, figure, figure three. Um, I just want to say one more comment, and that is that uh, in the physical layer, Wi-Fi uses both frequency hopping, frequency hopping spread spectrum, just like Bluetooth. Remember we said we talked about that, how that works. Um, and what's called direct sequence spread spectrum. Direct sequence spread spectrum, that's basically CDMA. If you remember, if you took uh, 4214 with me last uh, semester, uh, direct sequence spread spectrum and CDMA are the same thing. Frequency hopping spread spectrum is like what we talked about last week. Um, and in fact, it is more, um, this is. Direct sequence is, is basically what's used in uh, 802.11b. Okay, any quick questions on that?